For today's video we're going to look at online research techniques and tools that we can use on the computer to help us find out information we'd like to know about the buildings we'd like to model. Welcome back to Bexhill West, I'm James. So today's episode is going to be all about online research with a view to finding information out that can be of benefit to us with our model making. You see this comes on the back of an inquiry that I had from one of the viewers, Mike. Mike is building a model of Coatside, sorry, Coat Bridge Sunnyside Station which is a charming name. Now Coat Bridge Sunnyside is a station in North Lanarkshire in Scotland and Mike was particularly interested in the station canopy design and he thought that the station canopy design I'd showed a couple of episodes back might be suitable for him to incorporate into his own model and yeah maybe it would be but rather than share something with Mike which might be a compromise I thought is this something I could do to maybe research Mike's station a little bit more and see if I could come up with some ideas or some help for him that would be um, a little bit more accurate. So for today we're going to begin with looking at Google Earth which is a, a, an application that probably most of you are familiar with. Probably most of you realise that there is a measuring tool within Google Earth and that can be really powerful for gaining information about the prototypes that we're modelling. What I'd like to do as we move further through the video is show you another research source which I'm sure will be new to some of you um, and hopefully we can use that to very very accurately compare those measurements we got from Google Earth and hopefully make a decision as to whether or not we think Google Earth is accurate enough for our needs or whether we need to be a little bit more refined with our work. Let's get stuck in. Now I'm assuming most of you will be familiar with Google Earth and probably most of you have it installed if not, I'll leave a card up above to a link to a good video that shows you how to install it. But here we go, I've just opened Google Earth. It begins with initialising and it zooms in and shows us roughly where we are on the globe. In the top left hand corner of the screen is a search box. Now we can write whatever we like in the search box, but for now we're going to type in Cope Bridge Station. A list of options comes up and we'll click search. Google Earth will then zoom us in, in this case, to Copebridge Sunnyside Station. And as we get closer, we can zoom in and pan around to our heart's content. Now for this example, I'm going to measure the length of the station canopy which we can see here with the, the six peaks which run along the platform. Now I'm just getting it lined up. Here we are. Now on the top menu bar of the computer screen, and sadly it's cropped slightly out of my um, window here, we find the ruler tool. And once we've selected the ruler tool, we can select a line. In this case, I'll click to the left and now to the right hand side of that canopy. And I've taken care to line the cursor up with the corners of the canopy. And what that's done is measured a line. Now, in this case, we can't see that line, but if I rotate the image around and I'm just clicking on the center mouse wheel, we can see in yellow the line that we've just measured. Now that line is 28.87 metres long. That means our station canopy is 28.8 metres. Now the thing to bear in mind here is that because the canopy is above ground level, when we draw that line it projects the line onto what it assumes is ground level, or in our case the station platform. And that's why when I first drew the line we couldn't see it. We had to scroll away 
and twist the, the drawing round so that we could see it. But that's basically how we draw a line in Google Earth. So some of you may be wondering, well, so what? Can't we just use a map? And of course you can. If you have a printed map available, and particularly one to a large scale, then of course you can measure off of that with the ruler and multiply your scaling and what have you, just as people have done for donkey shears. However, sometimes we don't have a map available of the area we want to look at. For example, recently, myself and my friend Michael Audrey were building a model of an Austrian castle, and we didn't have a map of the area, nor did we have the means to go and visit what is now a private residence, so Google Earth came to our rescue. However, the subject of mapping is really interesting. And so what I'd like to do now is show you what I think is the ultimate one-stop source for all your mapping needs, uh, particularly when studying a certain location. Let's have a look at it. Now then, once again for this example, we'll use Copebridge, Sunnyside Station, and I'm just typing it into Google. In this case, I'm going to search for the Wikipedia page relating to Copebridge Sunnyside. And here it is. If I click on that, it gives us lots of information about the, the station, including a nice photograph. However, the bit that's of most interest to me are these coordinates here. Now, if I click on those two coordinates, the GeoHack page for those coordinates appears. And what we have here is essentially a set of links to all of the different mapping data that we could wish to find for that particular location. So for example, we could look at the Ordnance Survey map relating to that area. And it would take us straight to that site. If I zoom in, we could see it's centred on Coatbridge Sunnyside. If I come back to the GeoHack, we've got all sorts of other things. Now, a, a map site which is um, particularly useful is the National Library of Scotland maps. So if we click the link, now many of you will have seen the NLS maps before, and they're brilliant, because we can search for a particular location. Now in this case, because we've come in via the GeoHack page, again, we're centred exactly on the location we want. But from the, the this menu box on the left, we can select from a whole range of different maps from different periods to different scales. So we could have a look at this location across time. So for example, we are on the 1888 to 1913 map here and we can see any, all sorts of things going on in the area at the time including light railway lines and all sorts of bits and pieces so that's a really useful tool now we used Google Earth to do some measuring there is what I think is a better hang on So then, as a reminder, for the Wikipedia page for this particular station we're searching for, we would click here on the link where these coordinates are on the right-hand side of the page, and that will take us to the GeoHack page. Now, as I was saying, or as I said previously, we've used Google Earth for a measurement, but there's another site we can use which is in many ways much easier. And it's this one here, it's called GPS Visualizer. Now if we scroll across to the column labelled More, we'll find there's a tool called Topo. We can ignore that one for now. And there's a Drawing util Utility tool. So if we click on the Drawing Utility, that will take us to the GPS Visualizer map. And once again, we can see it is centred upon Coatbridge. So if I zoom in, Once again, that takes us to Coatbridge Sunnyside. Now, if I zoom this in as far as we can, down in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen is a ruler tool, just like um, we saw in Google Earth. 
Now this time, because we're looking at a, a essentially a two-dimensional map, it's a little bit easier to click on our shape and get a measurement. So if I click left and right, it's taken a measurement for us. In this case, it's measured 28 metres or 93 feet. Now, there's another tool we can do. We can draw a shape. So, we click the shape tool, and now if I move around this shape, it will trace its area. So it's just given us that that has a, an area of 330 meters squared, or 3,548 meters squared. I'm not sure quite how that would be useful to your modern making, but it's an interesting tool to use. So we could use this for measuring buildings and what have you all over. Now what's quite interesting here is we could take a screen, if I zoom back in, we could take a screenshot of this, we know its measurement, and we could scale that up and down, we could paste it into, we could paste it into something like Microsoft Word. And we could scale it up and down until the size of our drawing on screen or our printout exactly represents the scale that we want to use. And we can look at that in more detail another time. But I wanted to show you that GPS visualizer tool. I think it's brilliant. If we come back to we're back on the analysis, sorry, do excuse me. If we come back to this GeoHack site, there's probably dozens of different links to different mapping um, information that we, we might want to use. Now, one here that's really useful is the open railway map. So, for example, if I click on the open railway map, again, it centers me around Coatbridge Sunnyside I can zoom in, the railways in the area are marked, disused railways are also marked, we've got a, a tram line here that's marked on, and in fact if we zoom out and you look across the country you can find all sorts of things, disused railways and miniature railways even, they're, they're all on here, so this is a really useful tool. And the best thing about it is, because we're accessing it via that GeoHack site, it automatically centres upon the area we're interested in. Now of course what we can do, having found this particular GeoHack page, and in this case it's for Coatbridge Sunnyside Railway Station, we can bookmark that page so that we can visit it again at a later date and go through all of the different mapping options that are available to us here. And of course we can do exactly the same thing. We can go into Wikipedia, look for the location that we're after, and we could bookmark several stations or places of interest to us. There's even, I wonder if I can find it on here now, um, there's a list to, to um, ancient monuments and historical maps and all, all sorts of things. This really is a great page and well worth spending some time on. And so finally, we're going to look at one other research source, and that is to look into local authority planning records. You see, if the building you're modelling still exists, or indeed if it was demolished only recently, the chances are there will be planning applications made throughout its history. Now, those planning applications and the documents are public records. And in days gone by, you could go to the local town hall and put in a request, and the clerk would go and get the drawings for you, and you could have a look at them. This is how you can check on your neighbour's extension or the bunker they're building at the bottom of their garden or find out what they're up to. However, nowadays, all of those records are available online. And we can use those to look at our prototype buildings and hopefully find some really useful information. So once again, we'll go back to Coatbridge, Coatbridge Sunnyside. We'll have a look at what the local authority records hold in relation to the station. We'll see if there are any planning applications and see if we can find something useful. OK, so we're into the final phase of this exercise now. We're going to look at the local authority planning records. Now, before I get into it, I'm going to leave or show you this 
page, this was my Bing search from when I first so searched for Coatbridge Sunnyside Wikipedia. So this was the page I first went to to find the Wikipedia page. However, before we move on, if we have a look just here, we see the postcode ML53HR. Now that is the postcode for this particular station and you'll see how that will be useful to us in just a moment. So, I select a new Google tab and I'm going to search for Coatbridge Sunnyside Planning Application and Google throws up the North Lanarkshire Local Authority website, Planning Applications. So if we click on that, now this will be a, a similar page. You'll find a page that looks very similar to this for all local authorities. If we scroll down, we want this section here, View and Comment on Planning Applications. So we'll click that. There's some um, bump to read through. We'll ignore that for the moment. And we'll click on this red box to take us through to the planning search page. Now, I think all local authorities that I've come across will give us a, a simple tab where we can search by a keyword. So that might be Coke Bridge or Coke Bridge Station, something like that. Or an advanced tab. Now the advanced tab can be useful if we can't find what we want on the simple tab. And this gives us an opportunity to search for all different types of application and date ranges and what have you. But for most cases, and such as now, we just want to see what we can find. So I'm going to click on the simple tab. We'll go back to the page where we were. And in this box, it invites us to enter a postcode. So if we remember from that previous page, it was ML53HR. And if I click search, I'd expect to find a list of planning applications relating to that postcode. And here we go. several of them. Now this one here at the top looks quite interesting. Replacement of Scott's slate roof with Welsh slate and replacement of glazed roof lights with polycarbonate roof lights. So we'll click that tab. That takes us through to this particular application and it gives us the reference number and all sorts of stuff. Now what's really useful here is that it's dated. So this is February 2020. So we could expect any details that we might find now to be quite up to date. So I'm going to click on the documents tab and this should give us a list of all the documents relating to this planning application and it turns out there's 19 of them and there's all sorts of useful information there. I'm going to click on this one first of all, the existing elevations and we can see it's a drawing and there we have it the existing elevations of Cope Bridge Sunnyside Station. Now we can zoom in and have a closer look. What's really useful is this drawing, it's all to scale and there's a scale on the drawing itself. So we could print that out and that could well be very useful to us. Now it's worth talking a little bit about intellectual property and copyright. This drawing is the intellectual property, really, of IDP Architects, who are the company who are working on this proposed scheme. It's important that we don't take information like this and use it for any commercial aim, either to get one over this company or, or, or steal their intellectual property in any way, um, which I don't think viewers of this channel are going to do. We're interested in researching so that we can make models, so I don't think there's anything wrong with us using this information. But it's worth knowing where this information has come from. It's worth citing them as the originators of the information. And who knows, it may well be worth an email to the people responsible for producing the drawing that you want to use. It may well be, if you approach them nicely, they may have further information that might be of use to you. I, in the past, have produced drawings similar to this for people, and I certainly wouldn't mind sharing those with anybody who wanted to make a model or do a bit of research. Um, and in many cases, I'd just be interested to know who was using the drawing. Anyway, if we come back to the document page, 
If you remember, Mike was interested in a canopy for his station. So if I see on here, there is a, a section through the existing canopy and we can click on that. And once again, we've got a really useful scale drawing. There's a scale printed on the sheet. We can print that off and it would be possible with the right software to import that directly into computer aided design and work with that drawing directly. Now I'm not going to do that on this occasion, um, but I will show you in a future episode exactly how we can do that, how we can take what is a PDF document and turn that into a format that we can manipulate using CAD, but we won't do that, and we certainly won't do that with somebody else's drawing. So let's come back to that sheet we were on and see if there's anything else here that takes our interest. This valley gutter, for example, I'm interested to see what that is. So we click view document. Oh, and there's a close up. I mean, this is useful. We can we can measure the pitch of the roof and all sorts of information on here. Now, I won't go through all of these drawings, but you can see there's an awful lot of them. And I'm quite certain that all the information that Mike would need is, is on these drawings here. But something caught my eye just now. And I'm going to whiz back quickly a couple of pages. I have to put that postcode in again. So that was ML53HR, I think. I've got that wrong. Now we we'll come back to this list. And I thought this was interesting. Repainting of station building in Scott Rail colour scheme. Now this is dated 2010. Again, it's worth checking the dates on these applications. Let's have a look, see what we can find. Click on the document tab again. Now there's all sorts of things here. I mean, let's just quickly look at the location plan. Again, we've got a scale drawing. We can see everything going on in the area. We can see the station building here. It's it's greyed out, but we can see it. We could see the the works building opposite. There's all sorts of um, interesting and very useful information on this drawing. So that's great. Um, let's come back to where was it? I think it was this tab. Um, existing and proposed paint scheme. Click that link, wait for the page to load, and straight away we've got two elevations. This is looking from the station platform and we can see the peaks of the canopy above. The top half of the drawing shows us the proposed new paint scheme that they were looking to introduce in 2010. And the lower half of the drawing shows the existing, shows what it was like presumably up until 2010. Now. I'm just looking at this and I've spotted something that's really quite useful. Not only can we see these shades, sort of a lighter blue up here and a, a dark blue down here, but if we look at the notes on the drawing, we can see that timber cladding is painted pigeon blue. So that light blue is called pigeon blue. And the colour references shown on the drawing here actually quote a, a row number. Now, row, the row index is a, an index of colours, a bit like a Pantone reference, if you know what that is, um, and the round number relates to the specific sort of colour makeup, if you like, of that colour. You could go to a paint supplier, for example, and ask for RAL 5014, and they'll mix you any amount of pigeon blue that you would like. So, again, this is a really useful information on here. Um, I don't know what era um, Mike's model is intended to be, but certainly if he was looking at a, model, a modern image layer, then these, these round numbers could be really useful. And this really is indicative of the kind of information that you can find from a planning, uh, local authority planning search. It's worth noting that listed buildings require um, planning applications made for almost all works that are undertaken to the building, whether it's development or simply maintenance. And very often you can find from the planning applications information that it might even be difficult to discover if you were measuring a building up on site. So I could strongly recommend the use of local authority planning searches to 
um, research any building that you're thinking of modelling. Or even, if you like, just to be nosy with your neighbours. It's good for that too. OK, so what you're looking at now is one of the pieces of computer-aided design software that I use. This is quite a simple piece of software, and it's what I use in my day job as a school teacher. Now, what I've done is I've imported into it one of those drawings that we looked at previously. Now, I'm assuming that that drawing that we saw from the uh, planning department to be, I'm assuming that's pretty accurate. So what I'm going to do is take a measurement. Now, I must sort of put a caveat on here in that what I've done is I've imported the drawing. I've already scaled it to a scale of 1 to 76 to suit Mike's needs. And that gives us a length over the canopy of 377.02 millimetres. That will be the length of his model, if you like. So what I need to do is multiply that up. So 377.02 multiplied by 76. That gives us a length of the canopy of 26.653 metres. Now, if you remember, when we looked in Google Earth... I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but I think it was 28.8 um, uh, millimetres, uh, 28, sorry, 28.8 metres, and this is 26.7. Uh, so we can see there is an inaccuracy, and the inaccuracy was 146.5 millimetres, something like that difference. So in effect, um, that measurement off of Google Earth was let's say 150 millimetres out of what was measured on the ground. So 150 millimetres is six inches. It's really not very much. So I think we can assume that Google Earth is a pretty accurate, pretty powerful measuring tool. It's probably good enough for most of what we might require. It's certainly useful though, being able to double check it or double check our measurements using this tool. Now, when we went into the GPS visualizer software, we sort of measured the overall length of the building. So let's just let's just try that, see what we get. So we do that calculation again. 383.45 times 76, 29.142. Now I think, if I recall correctly, I'd have to zoom back and, and have a look at the, at the video, but I think when we used the GPS visualizer, it came up as 29 meters or 93 feet, I think. Um, so again, we can see that that was out by, let's say, 142 millimetres. Really not very much at all. Certainly not going to make any difference. So in fact, if we do 142 millimetres divided by 76, that would mean that if Mike used Google Earth to size his model, well, it's going to be less than 2 millimetres out. <laughs> I challenge anyone to be able to spot it. But what this shows us is we were able to use CAD off of a measure drawing to prove the accuracy of Google Earth, and I think that for most of our needs, it's just fine. So there we have it. There's some research ideas for you, and I hope that you found those useful. It's difficult making a video like this, knowing how much detail to go into. I'm sure there's some who probably know everything I've just shown you, and others who would have liked greater detail. If you'd like some more detail, then please let me know in the comments so maybe I can revisit this subject again. Hopefully it's inspired you to do a little bit more research yourself of some buildings that are of interest to you. It's certainly a great way to spend your time. Now when Mike contacted me about Coatbridge Sunnyside, he didn't mention that next door practically to the station was the Summerlee, I think it's called the Summerlee Museum of Scottish Industrial Heritage. It's got a title, something like that. Well, I didn't know at the time, and I was on Google Earth, just having a nose about like you do, and I saw a canal, and I thought, well, I like canals. I'll investigate that a little bit more. And I saw some old industrial ruins, and at the time they reminded me of the old ancient ruins in Rome. And I scrolled around a little bit more, and I found some old steam locomotives, I think I even saw a Bayer Garrett, then I saw a mine, and some pit head gear. I thought, wow, this is amazing, what a wonderful place. I felt a fall when I scrolled around a little bit more and discovered that it's a very well-known industrial heritage museum. Just goes to show that Google Earth can be a dangerous thing, particularly if you're short for time. 
I certainly wasted many happy hours on it. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.